So you might recognize this template by now, this little format. What we have here in Mozilla Thimble is an example of my cool website. And what I'm going to show you guys here is how specificity works in HTML and CSS. So first, I'm going to start coding, right? I'm going to start making some classes, IDs, and I'm going to show you guys how we're going to target them in CSS, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a object called a div, right? And what's cool about divs is that they let us divide our HTML and CSS into sections, right? I think of it as a little box almost. Um, so I'm going to call my div a class, and I'm going to call that class fave thing. You might recognize it by now. If we look at our CSS, uh, we'll notice that while we have fave thing in our HTML, we don't have it in our CSS, right? So to start us off, I'm going to write fave thing as our selector in our CSS and I'll do those curly braces. What you'll notice is that as soon as I type the curly braces in our CSS, when we look at our little preview side, we see a line where the class is, right? Where the class is actually in our HTML. So I'm gonna style it up so we can make it more apparent where that div is fave thing. And I'm gonna create a border and I'll make it one pixel and I think I want to make it dashed and how about we try pink right so what we have right now it's just a line um, but I'm going to start to fill it up and we'll see a border appear around so fave thing how about let's let's just make a general fave thing sort of thing well and we'll make it a header too this is where I write about my favorite things. Alright, and how about we make this a little bit bigger so it's more obvious. So there we go. Now we have a now we have a big old dash border. So yeah, this is something that you guys should think about. When you're coding, change things as you go along. If you don't like how it looks, you can go back and forth and adjust your CSS until you see something the way you like it. So what I did right then is I changed my border from being one pixel dashed in pink to four. So this is what it was before, and I wanted to make it a little bit bigger so it's easier for me to see. So I changed the one to a four. All right, so now this is set up a little bit better. I also think maybe I should make this a little bit smaller. Um, maybe it's not that important either, so maybe Maybe this works a little better. H3. All right, so just changing it up as we go. So we have our class called fave thing. We have it in our HTML side and our CSS side, right? So it's defined. So let's get into more specific things. So what is a specific thing of mine? Or so what could I write about in as my favorite things? Well, I really like food and I really like animals so let's focus on that so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make another div class and I'm gonna call it food I'm gonna close it off and then I'm gonna make another div class and I'm gonna call it animals right? and I'm going to create the space of where the content is gonna go now and I'm going to go to my CSS and I'm going to style it. So what you'll remember is that this div, right, is within another div. So it is not whatever content is here in the food section. So it's like, I really like sushi, right? And then maybe here. I really like animals, right? So I really like sushi, 
is technically not only part of the food class, but it's also part of the fave thing class. And the animals class, I really like animals, this little paragraph tag, it's not only within animals, but it's within fave thing. Something that's important to know is that animals, while it's part of fave thing, it's not part of the food class. And same thing with the food class, while it's part of the fave thing class, it is not part of the animals class. What we're going to do now is we're going to style the food class differently from the animal class to reinforce, uh, to reinforce that they're not together, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say fave thing and I'm going to do dot food, have the curly braces, and what you'll see is that I really like sushi is now highlighted. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing over here, fave thing, and I'm going to go dot animals. And I'm going to do the curly braces, and we'll notice that this is highlighted too. So what's a way that we can visually change it up to help us distinguish? How about we change the color of the font? Super simple. So for food, how about I make this text um, purple, right? And how about I make this text color dark. I think I saw a salmon. Dark salmon. There we go. So what we can see here is that our fave thing dot food, um, the, the color of the text belonging to these classes is purple. Um, the color of the text belonging to the fave thing dot animals is a nice dark salmon. Mm. In terms of specificity, the selector in our CSS that says dot fave thing and dot food is more specific than our general dot fave thing and same thing with here the dot fave thing dot animals class for our selector is more specific than the dot fave thing as well right uh, something that you should know is that we technically don't need this class to exist if we want to call this objects, right? Um, so while it is true that the in our HTML side that we can see that the food class is within the fave thing class and the animals class is within the fave thing class, and then on the CSS side we can see that we called our selector that way to indicate that the food is within the fave thing together, same thing with the animals, uh, we could actually delete the dot fave thing and our code will recognize that we're talking about food still and we're talking about the animals class still. So this is something to note about when you're using multiple classes. Unless you had a really complicated system of classes, IDs, element selectors in your HTML, you don't always need to have multiple classes layered together. Um, so this is why I deleted the dot fave thing class in front of the food and the animals in our CSS because it wasn't really necessary. I'm going to show you guys now more necessary ways to think about how you are being really specific with your selectors. I'm going to focus a little bit more on the animals because I see some potential there. So first let's go to the index.html and let's add some more lines to our section. So how about, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to go and start listing some of my favorite websites for animals. So let's start typing. I really like to follow the to visit the following Twitter accounts for animal viewing goodness. And so let's see. Let me write them out. I really enjoy emergency kittens. I really enjoy real grumpy cat. And I also really enjoy both uh, cats. Alright, so so for those of you who don't know Twitter, um, you add this little at sign to indicate where like, hey, 
where you are in Twitter. Uh, so somebody might be like, hey, what's your Twitter? And then you can be like, hey, I'm at, then you say your Twitter username. Um, for emergency kittens, while this is how you properly spell emergency, the emergency Twitter kittens Twitter account doesn't spell emergency that way, so let me correct it right there. Boop. So um, I'm going to create a link, which is something that we haven't done before. I'm going to type an A, which stands. This little A, uh, this little A tag over here means link. And I'm going to copy it over. Boop. Um, same thing over here. I'm going to write this A. I'm going to copy at real comfy cat over. Bodega cats A. Cool. All right. So how do we actually link the thing to somewhere else? So um, I'm going to start linking them to their designated Twitter accounts. You don't have to know all these things that I'm doing right now, by the way. I am just coding to show you and talk. We're going to talk a little bit more about specificity and classes. but. We're gonna go along as we go, but we're gonna go along later and talk about these things that I'm doing specifically later. And honestly, you guys will probably need to study and memorize what I'm doing on your own. Um, I've told you about how coding is really another language and you don't learn languages overnight, right? You have to memorize, you have to immerse yourself in the language, and this takes a long time to do sometimes. So if you can't follow along with the stuff that I'm typing right now, it's okay. Because right now we're really trying to focus on specificity. Um, and there we go. Cool. So what we have here is we have links to Twitter accounts of my favorite animal, my favorite animals um, websites on Twitter. Okay, so what we have here is that we have our, within our fave thing class, we have our animals class, right? So I click on that, we see everything in the animals class. And then more specifically, we have these links to the websites. Okay, so how do we style this specifically in our CSS? We go back to CSS now that everything is established, and we have animals, right? So animals, our font for our animals is currently dark salmon. So now we have to call a link. So we go to animals, right? And we put the general element selector, which is A. And then we do the curly braces. And you'll notice that as soon as I did that, all of our links in our CSS were highlighted. And so I'm gonna change the color to um, aqua. Great. Ooh, it's a little bright <laughs> and you can't really read it. But what you'll notice is that now we are specifically telling our code that, hey, if it belongs in the animals class and it's a link, make it aqua. 